Hello, everybody, and welcome to the LCS Challengers League. We are here in playoffs, and I'm Beat Down Boulevard, of course, joined with the one and only Magical. Magical, what are you wearing? Hey, Pete. Hi. You got any grapes? What? What? Uh, oh! Where, where am I? You're what is, here. What's, what's going on? I'll tell you what's Hello. going on. We have a guest, and it's going to be NACLQ caster, Grapes. Hello. Hey, how Trust are me, you? Trust me, I'm, I, you know, I'm doing great. I, I'm just wearing, I wear this outfit all the time. And who you are? I actually, yeah, I just wasn't right. sure I was on the show today, and this is, this is what I am. Thankfully, we have the duck here as well, uh, to help me out. Uh, with it depends this, but... who you ask. <laughs> he looks great. I love the build. Right. You can't, you, you can't, we can't see the face, but it's all good. Uh, Joe, you welcome. know what? I take it back. I do like it. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe it's a better thing, but we're having a great time here. The playoffs are starting for the North American Challengers League, and, you know, to get us ready for the postseason, we have a bit of an intro to show you guys, so I think we're going to kick that off right now. Previously on NACL, the regular season has ended, and Cloud9 Challengers narrowly took first from Dignitas. 16 teams enter the double elimination bracket. Who will be victorious? That, that's crazy. I got goosebumps every <laughs> single time that I've seen that video. It's just amazing. I like how they highlighted one player from each team as well. Even even the ones yeah. towards the bottom. That was just I mean, so good. I like, I'm seeing this for the Eric, first time and it's get unbelievable. Death Rex, get, and give where, Death Rex some love. Where, where do I even start? Like Eric deserves so much respect for like all the music he's able to like make and put up. Like on such short notice, obviously, like everybody contributing to the video. Kangas for running the show on it. Like this, this is good stuff. Like I love it. Yeah, shout out Deserx Mazel on the on the voiceover as well. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just so exciting to get into the playoffs. And speaking of, it's time Wait, to talk hold on. about. Did you not like my Naruto running? Where's my shout out? Oh, it was there. I mean, we, we all were... Naruto ran, <laughs> yeah, so you know, we were all there. Shout out to everyone then. Yeah, true. Yep. Shout out to everyone, even you, Grapes, Thank for you. enjoying I, the video. I, I enjoyed it. It was great. Exactly. Um, playoffs are great. So many players great. to be involved, including some rookies, some new faces to the NACL. Uh, and to celebrate a lot of these new faces entering the scene, uh, some of the broadcast talent decided to come together and create uh, an all-rookie team, basically, um, to highlight some of these new additions. This is Magical's roster, I believe. Yes. Um, I don't know, Magical, you want to describe why you decided to choose some of these players over others? 
Uh, Lunasia, just been an outright star. Like, it was hard between him and Faisal, I'll be honest. I was, like, tossed on which one I wanted to actually go for. I debated it for a while, but I'm like, you know what? Lunasia is the one who impressed me the most, just because I already kind of knew what Faisal was going to bring. But Lunasia was the one with, it was an unknown quantity where I'm like, how is this guy going to perform? And he outperformed all expectations. Perry, same thing, except I knew more about him, but he has outperformed any expectations I could possibly imagine for him. Shochi, around the similar... Uh, I, I pretty much feel like I'm just going down the line and be like, yeah, <laughs> I expected one thing and I got more out of them. Shochi, same. Lens, same. I expected him to be good and he's been even better. Sketch is the one where might be the, the outlier because he is on CLG Faith. But I feel like this guy has been like one of the shining lights for the team. And I really do hope that he gets another fair shake going in summer or if, you know, depending on how CLG Faith go, maybe they pull off some upsets today. Yeah, a lot of provisional team members on your rookie team, which is really interesting to see. And I think we have Beatdown's roster as well, if we wanted to pull that one up. Beatdown, some differences here. You have Masu and Yukino in as well, and as well as Faisal up in the top lane for fear. Yeah, I mean, most of this doesn't really warrant much explanation. It's just correct. The only one that was really hard <laughs> for me was the jungle roll. Like, Perry was a really good shout, Alex. I'll give you credit for that one. You got that one right. But, like, Yukino, for me, it's kind of like what you were talking about, where has exceeded expectations, has developed really well this split, and I imagine he's going to do really well as time goes on. But if I had this roster playing right now, I think this, uh, this is the best roster out of just rookie players. I think the, the explanation was like a team of five rookies that you think could perform the best in the NACL playoffs. That's right. And, yep. I mean, there's a lot of players here that are just really top performers on their current organizations. Yeah. I do like your Trevor shout out. I'll be honest. I, I like that yeah. one as well. I mean, I it's, just, it's, just, it's just right. Sorry. See, I don't know what to I, tell you. Well, the maximum amount for one team I wanted to have myself, I limited myself to two per team. So ah, I mean, I, see. I, I did, I, it was self imposed. It was self imposed. You didn't have exactly. to do that. It's but true. That's kind of why it's like. Faisal, it was a it was a hard argument, right? Lunasia, oh, Faisal, I think are both real. I I don't know, man. Lunasia has outperformed all expectations of the, what this player had going in this okay, season. I'll give you that. It's a solo and, solo kill king. Yeah, yep, that, that's what yep. it is. And a lot now of that players, Eminence is gone. Yeah, now that now that he's gone, now and that maybe new, Hoon suddenly disappeared. <laughs> he has the second most. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of really good players uh, here in these rookie rosters, and they've all contributed to their team's performances in the standings. We can pull those up right now. How crazy is it, guys, that there's literally one game separating third place from ninth place here? Wild. <laughs> yeah, Wild. it's been unbelievably close in these last couple of weeks. We talked about a couple teams that made those pushes towards the end. Uh, the, the big joke was like, oh, you know, you want to move yourself to the left side of the bracket. Teams like uh, FlyQuest, Wildcard were looking like they were going to fall away, but managed to win their tiebreaker against TLC, who was also making that sort of late season push towards the back half. And yeah, like it was tight. We still have clumps going into playoffs. I mean, shout out to FlyQuest, right? A team that had been struggling throughout oh most God. of the year. They bit, bring in bit. Winsome, and seventh place does not do them justice right. with how no, good true. they have looked since bringing him in. Yeah, I, I thought that Winsome really elevated that FlyQuest Challengers roster immensely. Either just like the coordination or maybe just having that veteran presence really helped them out. Um, and, you know, they'll be playing against the Mortals as we can take a look at our official playoffs bracket. Here it is, the full reveal. And let's just take a look. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, man, I love bracket season. Kinda love empty. filling things out. It's March, so basketball is also doing stuff here for college. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of really interesting matchups up here. Kind of empty right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to this playoffs, you know, filling it all out. If you haven't, maybe, you know, everyone out there, get your predictions in with your own bracket, see how well you do. But looking at a lot of the scrapes, you're right, there are a lot of exciting matchups. Like, you look at Wildcard versus a Team Liquid Honda Challengers, that's going to be really hype because we saw that already as a tiebreaker match yep. where Wildcard yeah. were able to be, uh, get, get the higher seed. But it's still like, they still got to face each other. And then other ones that stand out to me, like, it might sound weird, but I actually think that the AoE Golden Guardian Challengers Ooh. series is very exciting, despite being a fifth versus twelfth seed. Super, yeah, that, that actually I have my eyes on as well. And we're going to be seeing that matchup a little bit later today. Uh, but, you know, speaking of AoE, they are a provisional team. And it's important to remember that the bottom four provisional teams will be sent into the promotion relegation tournament. And I think, oh. gentlemen, as you somebody... Wanna, I do want to say something really quick. Yes. Just so everyone sees, the CLGC versus EGC, that's meant to be TSMC. Just so everyone knows. Oh, right. Yes, the TSM against CLG. I just, 
just noticed that. I'm like, oh, I want to crank that before <laughs> anyone goes and be like, why is EGC on here twice? Yeah, that that's not happening. For it sure. is TSM, El Clasico rivalry, but I know um, I've been doing a lot of work in the NACL qualifiers, and I think this is a good time to show uh, you guys what we think about some of the teams that are currently playing in those qualifiers against some of the teams that might end up in that promotional relegation tournament from the NACL. These are the top eight points earners right now. Uh, the qualifiers are actually still currently going on on different community streams. You can go check those out um, if you are interested. But a lot of really recognizable names. And the important thing is that the top four points earners will qualify, and there's still another entire tournament left to go. Uh, Bitan, I guess I can start with you. I mean, you were down to the qualifiers with me last year. Are there, are there any <laughs> names here that you're super familiar with? Uh, I, if I, there's a couple players from like every team that like I recognize have seen play in the past. I mean, Sudsy's a throwback. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. realize like until recently that he he popped back into competitive, which is kind of hype on its own. Uh, from the few games that I've seen, the standouts are obviously ones like Maryville. Uh, I've seen back and forth performances from TikTok Tony Top, but obviously second place. So they've been doing pretty well, which is what matters. And I really like overall the, first of all, the name of the graphic when we talked about making this one, because Blood in the Water is really, uh, I think very apt because we talked about how some of the provisional teams uh, here in the NACL struggling a little bit. And they, you know, those struggles, they, they sense them. There are teams who yeah. these qualifier teams have their eye on when that tournament comes through. And like you said, four out of our six provisional teams are going down there. And that tournament's only about a month away or so, which is going to be a really exciting yeah. thing to see. Um, of course, there's still a lot to be decided, but those are the eight teams or so, those players that we're likely to see make it in, unless something really crazy happens here. Uh, but I think we could pull up our, our schedule for today because we have to go through the entire top half of the bracket in just two days. We're going to start off with our first series, C9 Challengers up against CLG Faith. You know, we're looking at this one, we're not maybe super excited about the potential outcome, but there's always the crazy upset that happens here in the NACL playoffs, so we always want to make sure that we're prepared for that. Not quite the second seed curse that we're, we'll see here. Right. However, you mentioned March Madness, and whenever I look at March Madness, I always am rooting for the 16th seed over the number one seed every single year. And, you know, it didn't happen for 40, 50 odd years, but then finally it happened, like, what was How it, long? like three years ago? Yeah. Something like that, where it actually happened for the first time ever. So, <laughs> you know what? You never know. Here, especially for the LCS Challengers League, Playoffs are all that matters. The regular season, you put that out of your mind if you're CLG Faith. You go into this one refreshed and ready to take down the number one. I mean, this is going to be a tough one, obviously. We saw this in the last day of regular season games uh, on Monday. And, I, you know, it was the expected outcome. The biggest thing for me going into this matchup is that we, of course, we don't know, certainly, because like you said, Magical, uh, only playoffs matters in terms of going down to that relegation promotion tournament. So the big thing for me, I'm looking for the teams like CLG Faith, FlyQuest, uh, FlyFam, excuse me, is who we think are likely going to go there is, can they show us the performances to make us believe that they will come back to the NACL? Because of course you can go down there, win your games and make yeah. it back in summertime. Like it's not doom and gloom if you get, if you lose your two series. Yeah, but we got to first start talking about our number one seed. It was Dignitas for a long period of the regular season, but C9 came away with it towards the end. This is a roster full of veterans, players who have been in that LCS before. Uh, and Magical, this bot lane, Lost in Zazel, has just performed excellently all year. Since Tomo went up to the LCS for Dignitas, this has become the number one bot lane. Lost and Zazel just have an amazing synergy with one another. Like. No one can really stand up against them that well. It's hard to have to deal with the engaged potential. You can see the shot calling that Zazel brings to a team. This is why he had been so hyped up back, you know, when he went to the world, got all the way to semifinals with Cloud9, even when he then went on to EG. This guy was always it's outstanding, top performing support. It's just more that he took his own break after some shenanigans happened in the amateur circuit. That he's just like, you know what, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go into coaching. Now he's back here with Cloud9 Challengers. And him and Lost just have this beautiful synergy. Yeah, this team has is, is looked really good. I mean, they're the number one seed for a reason, right? I feel like also the addition of Diplex has been an, an interesting twist as well. Uh, but I believe we have either have some clips or we can pull up the lineup that they'll be facing up against for today uh, in CLG Faith, who, you know, have had their struggles. They've only won one game throughout the entirety of the regular season. But as you said, playoffs is the only thing that matters in Beatdown. We started to see some points of promise, even though this Signs isn't necessarily life. the roster that we were 
expecting to start off the season? Definitely not. I mean, one of the teams that have had, we've actually had a lot of roster issues, which I guess is kind of the springtime curse, whether it's, you know, uh, things pop up, visas, whatever the case may be. CLG, Faith is no exception to that. So the idea, again, like I posed earlier, was it isn't so much about winning here or going far in the tournament. If you can, that's wonderful. But we also, from this team, need to see signs that we will show us they are going to make it back to the NACL in summer. Because so far, it's been looking really rough. They have been improving slowly, but will it be fast enough? Because like you said in the graphic, there is indeed blood in the water. It's going to be really interesting to see if they even can show something that will make us hope a little bit for them. Because as you mentioned, these teams did play just a couple of days ago, yep. uh, and it did not go super well for CLG Face. Ooh, and we saw a showcase of why Cloud9 have been dominant. All three of their lanes just take, took to town CLG Faith. All of them are so strong. That's how, why we've talked about this team, not just the bot lane of Loss and Zazel, but every single one Diplex able to solo out Shochi on Kled. I love this play as well. I had to show this one, even though I wanted to keep it more around the series we had just witnessed, because every lane looks for that domination. They don't need the assistance of Toma, and it frees up their jungler to pretty much do whatever he needs to on the map to make up if they have any shortcomings. Yeah, it's a uh, really well-balanced roster, I feel like, throughout. I, you know, seeing Diplex on Kled was not something that I would have expected going into, you know, his appearances on, on NACL, but that's kind of where we are. And, and on the other side, CLG Faith, I think their bot lane, Sketch specifically, I mean, Magical, you had them on your all-rookie team, but yes. uh, a pretty a pretty strong roster in, in terms of some moments, but maybe not all of them. Well, it's also, we got to take a lot of, uh, with a grain of salt when it comes to Sketch, because Sketch did have to play for the first part of the split in the ADC role, and then split scrim times with ADC and support, since that was what he was trying to go for, was being the support, more utilizing his shot calling, how he looks at the map, and helps out the rest of the team. So it does make it a little bit difficult, but still, I think Sketch has shown those moments, right? As now bringing in Aaron, they have looked like they have a bit of cohesion, especially when we look at the lane phase. That tends to be when they're the strongest. When they find these plays 2v2, they don't necessarily need NXI to be there. It's always about how they utilize that lead they get in lane to the mid to late game. Yeah, I think that, yeah, CLG Faith, Really needs to show some things here. We're, we're getting ready to start to throw things over for the draft, but I have to ask you, Beatdown, before we do. I mean, you were discussing how, um, you know, different um, provisional teams are going to have to show some light in some cases, even if they're not necessarily favored. Yeah. What are you looking for out of CLG oh, okay. Faith before, um, you know, they potentially will make their way down there towards that gauntlet? Really quick, I thought uh, I thought you were gonna ask me for a prediction, and I'm like, man, that's just a, <laughs> no, 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 how no. could you? No but, predictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, there, there's I mean, a the, pretty obvious ex expectation for how this yeah, series is yeah, gonna yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the big thing for me is really from CLG Faith is just the game plan. Like you look at teams like FlyFam, it's very clear, especially in the late half. Uh, late half of the split that they have ideas that they're going for it's why we kind of talk about that fly fan moment at 14 minutes where they lose things out for clg faith i want to see that stronger early game from them more of that game plan at least if they're trying something it's good enough for me proactivity is what we're going to be looking for i believe the draft is ready for the first game of the nacl playoffs magical beatdown floor is all yours Thank you, Grapes. We'll see you on the other time for our halftime show or third time show, depending on if we get all three games out of a best of three, since it is playoffs. Number one seed versus the number 16 to start it all off. And we start off, keep in mind, everyone, we are also on 13-5. New patch. We are. That, uh, these players are having to play on. So you might see things that you weren't necessarily expecting, especially if you watch the, the last couple weeks of the regular season. Yeah, we, we, we've got a, a couple things, especially the 13-5 change was a surprising one, but a lot of changes come through, a lot of good ones in my opinion, particularly surrounding the jungle. The fact that jungle, uh, the the whole thing with counter jungling is out of the picture now, big fan, because uh, that didn't seem, I didn't like that change. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, Magical. That's out of the picture. Now you get more gold from each camp. It isn't much, but it starts to add up. And I think that plays, interestingly, kind of well for CLG Faith, because even talking to Myra way back in the earlier parts of the split, when we had her on the broadcast, she was talking about how NXI plays best when he is, you know, the guy in a draft. Mm -hmm. Those farming junglers, kind of similar to what we see from Evil Genius Challengers when they throw shade in on things like the Graves and whatever the case may be. And maybe we see CLG Faith go back to something like that since those options are available to them now. 
But as we run through the draft, we see a lot that we had seen previously on 13-4 being banned that Senna, I talked about, at least a 13-3 hold over Grogus. We've seen come up in the meta, same with Caitlyn. But, oh, whoa. Oh, nice. I, I mean, Rumble got buffed. Rumble. Yeah, he, he did. Buffed. And there's flexibility with that champion. We've seen uh, Skytech play that in support. NXI could play that in jungle as well. That's true. So there, there is that little bit of flexibility. You're right. I mean, Rumble is just incredibly strong after some of the changes. The big thing, the Harpoon, uh, basically, the Magic Resist Shred is doubled. He doesn't need to build Void Staff anymore, which is a great feeling. And I didn't expect Sketch to be playing this, but after what I've seen from AoE, I can't take any more chances. So now I know for sure it's not going to be Rumble support because that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't work out so well now, did it? I think Ooh. it works if you have Senna, because then you can at least farm. Uh, a little that's bit that's more. true. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of less bad. I'm gonna right. say that's all I'm less giving you. Less bad, but it's still not the greatest. This is much yeah. better. That uh, Thresh means that. I mean, there's still three lanes that it can be flexed, and Talon could play that mid lane. NXI could play jungle, Rumble. Wait, we can what? have Johnny oh, on it. For a second, I thought you were talking thresh. about Thresh. I was like, what? I mean, if it's if it's me, yeah. What like, patch notes have you read? If I'm playing Thresh, then it has the, the five-way flexibility. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about this game. And we're looking yeah, at yeah, the yeah. bands in the second part. Double up on mid lane bands from CLG Faith. And then we have Viego taken away from NXI. They're either trying to pigeonhole this rumble into the jungle or with how the patch has changed. And we've seen a lot more Viego cropping up. There's just certain champions like even the Lee Sin, another yeah. holdover that XI loves to play, just taken off the board. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like it's been a long time since we've seen Rumble Jungle, so even though it is kind of that flex, it's it's viable. It's not common, and it makes sense. You want to get rid of the more popular stuff on this patch, like Viego Lee Sin. And now, Ooh. okay, so it's gonna be the Tristana mid. It looks like yes. for Town, and it does kind of leave that question up in the air. CLG Faith waiting till the very last moment to show us where this Rumble is going to go. I do believe it's gonna be for Bajani on the top side. I would imagine I mean, so. More than likely, and on, and on Cloud 9 side, I mean. Diplex, we talk about how he came in pretty recently and how I've always thought, even casting him in the LFL last year, really good team fighter. And that's why I was expecting him to go for something like the Ari or the Annie, where you're going for a setup. I mean, Annie's so strong, even still after mm -hmm. everything that's happened these last couple of patches, you simply cannot go wrong. Though, so looking at Annie into Tristana, you do went out a little bit in the lane phase. Once you, I, I mean, once you get a couple levels, you get that range added for Tristana, plus... If you buffer the rocket jump well, there's not very much that Diplex can do against it. But looking at oh, how we have a Renekton final oh. pick, I mean, I talked about the Rumble Jungle, and it is going to be okay. Rumble Jungle. Hey, there it is. It actually is going to be Rumble in the jungle for NXI, which is, uh, I mean, that's an exciting one. I have not seen that literally for years. Overall, if we look at the draft, like, it's very clear CLG Faith, like they're trying to scale hard to this late game. You got double marksman. You have the Orn for ornaments. Rumble's ability to team fight as well, because when you actually get income and you're not on support, that equalizer has an incredibly low cooldown. The only real and so for Cloud Nine, you look at it, they got a lot of pick potential. So much CC in this composition, mm -hmm. and so especially they have a lot of power in this early game. So I imagine, especially towards that top side, Fake God is going to be getting a lot of pressure in this top lane. Easily something Tomio can be playing for. We cannot discount Lost and Zazel. As you highlighted, Magical, mm. best bot lane we have in this lead on the most popular bot lane combo right now. Yeah. It is going to be very difficult for CLG Faith. It is all about these lanes winning for Cloud9 Challengers. We've seen it all season long. They drafted here in game one against CLG Faith. And as you talked about, all they have to do is maybe play around Fake God early into the top lane. The mid lane and bot lane should work out well as we load up onto the rift. This game one here in the playoffs for the 2023 spring split of the North American Challengers League. Uh, Magical, it's the LCS Challengers League. Come eh, on, man. I like to say that because then I can say it's the Salt League still. No, you know what? I, I know what happened. You guessed the Rumble Jungle and now it's just all in your head. That's just how it goes, I guess. I, I you also think, like You think you know a guy. League. Yeah? You, you're a big fan of Salt? You like crackers? Uh, it depends. Uh, with certain kinds of soup, you know. Ooh, man, that actually sounds really good. Right. I was just uh, making a salt joke. I know. I, I, I was just making me hungry. And speaking of hungry, both teams going to be hungry to take this game. So if you want to support them, make sure you're in chat spamming either C9C or CLGF to show your support on which team you think is going to take game one. That's right. Shout out to the faithful. 
They obviously some people believe in CLG, but uh, I can't say this is uh, the most surprising outcome. But I will say, I like CLG's draft. I mean, you have push on this bottom lane. I actually favor Thresh into something like the Rakan, especially for Sketch being that player we talk about as, uh, I mean, recently switched to the role, did play AD carry for this team as CLG had to figure out some roster issues like we were highlighting, but talking to him about it, he believes he really can succeed in this role. And I mean, some of the best uh, supports we have in NA end up being role swaps from pretty much every level of play. We see that to be true. So Sketch is not only played now is what I'm interested in, but his development further as he spends more time in the role. This is why I like to talk about how Aaron and Sketch have been in lane. Because this tends to be when we see a lot of their power as a duo. A lot of it off the shot calling of Sketch looking for these plays. But you are up against best, well, dubbed the best bot lane in the Challengers League of Lost Zazel. It's a pretty easy argument to make with how powerful they are in just in general. And you can see there, getting the level 2 spike over Aaron Sketch, completely forcing him off that wave. Right. And biggest things for me, looking on cloud Nine side, CLGF have a lot of damage, a lot of late game scaling. We're seeing Tomio opt in for the Aftershock. I mean, it's just all about going in there, doing as much CC as you can to set up, again, for Lost. And even Diplex, as time goes on, will have a lot of damage. You can see what Diplex is even trying to do in this lane phase. Like, went with Electrocute, has the Ignite. It's kill pressure. He wants blood against town in this laning phase. Also, shout out to CLG. Still supporting the faithful. Give them some loves. No, it's playoffs. I, I said it before. You look at the regular season if you're CLG faith and you say, you know what? Things happen. We learn from them. It's in the past. It's in the past. It is playoff time. It is do or die. Everything that happened then no longer matters. We have to perform on the day, show why we deserve to have our spot, or even if they can pull off this miraculous run. Make it so that they're not even in the provisional tournament to begin with. That would be something. So far, and Lost and Zazel have that pressure on the bottom side as we so often see them get. Oh, Tomio. Okay. Uh, that was secured by Tomio, now NXI. Gotta be a little bit careful. They have town nearby. Oh, Here's hey. Sketch and Aaron. Oh, Ooh, nice. Now a beautiful play, getting the cleanse as well out of Lost. The rocket jump over the wall. But C9C should be safe. Nice flash from Lost just to stay safe. Yeah, hey, nice rotation. You saw the play happen because NXI was waiting for Tomio to show up and even had Town move as soon as possible. You get both summoners out of loss. The Zaya is not level six. He's under a lot of threat. This laning phase just got a lot easier for Aaron and Sketch. And that's big playing towards this bottom lane because top side is going to be really hard. Fake God is on this Renekton. You're going to have this early pressure. But if you get great leads on your bottom side of CLG Fate, that means that one, you can keep Lost and Zazel pushed under their tower. You can get that first rotation of the Rift Herald, and you can actually start this early game off really strongly. Because CLG Fate, this is a comp where you just want to, you're just trying to chill. You know, you're just trying to scale. And if we are 20 minutes and they're even down maybe 1k gold, you are laughing. It's Cloud9 who have to keep the pace up. It's Cloud9 who need to get the gold leads rolling in this matchup. Yeah, like we didn't talk about it. Aaron's not going for the poke Vars. It is on hit Vars, which makes sense with yeah, a lot of yeah. the low range on the side of C9C. That's right. That plus, I mean, the beauty of that double marksman comp, that DPS late mm. game. So crazy. And the range also being a factor. Yeah, and it's so far, bot side pressure has been won for CLG Fade. You can see they've got some vision down, but no one's going for the Drakes yet. I mean, big thing for NXI, trying to get to that level six, trying to have access to that equalizer, as that's going to be super important from him. And uh, I just lost my preview. Oh, yeah, I, I just, I did for a second too. Here, we're okay, back. we're back. All right, a little bit of a fight in the bot lane. Play not going to connect. Sketch barely alive. Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, he's dead. Lost. We, we did not respect the blade recaller. No, we did not. Oh, not good. But I mean, nicely done from Lost and Zazel. Getting, I mean, just getting that advantage right back. Lost getting that first kill despite losing both summoner spells. This is a great plus here for Cloud9. Oh, okay, Aaron, you don't actually want to fight this one. I know you have an Ectai nearby, but you took a lot of damage initially. Lost should be fine, too. Kind of get back towards his turret. Right, and oh, Tomio's here, and XI wants to Cut help Aaron get this wave shoved in, but they have to be careful. Sketch has made it back, though, so they might be able to get what they're looking for. 
Looks like both sides gonna call it off, but mid lane. Diplex getting a lot of damage onto town. Force him out of lane. And I mean, with the ignite, like you're under so much kill threat, so you have to be able, you have to back, you have to go for the recall. But interestingly enough, okay. CLG take this time to start the dragon. It's Makes known because yeah, Zazel throws the Q over the wall, doesn't hit the dragon. They have the information that, it, that this is going on. It's just, do they actually want to fight it? Okay, that's gonna be the death sentence. But man, they just blow up Sketch every single time with the blade collar. And now Diplex is the first one to move around using. Tibbers to make sure Town can't join the fight as NXI tried to blast gun away, but the oh, they got the him with the stun for his own kill on Rumble. Yeah, and that's just such good setup there from Diplex. The all in before the dragon is what sets that one up. And suddenly, Cloud9, 3 and 0 in this early game. And Fake God, he's just naturally chatting it up in the top lane. Very favorable matchup for him. And it means that Renek, uh, rather, that Rift Herald rotation that we were talking about and that CLG was banking on now is going to be a much more hard, difficult option for them. Especially because it's all been off the bot lane plays for Cloud9 challengers. We hyped them up beforehand, and we're seeing why they have been dubbed the strongest duo of all of the challengers league. That's right. It's just been some incredible performances. I mean, we already talked about Zazel and uh, how intelligent of a player he is, how whatever team he's on, always manages to do very well. He brings so much knowledge, leadership to a team. But he's also talked very highly of Law, saying he's the most aggressive AD, one of the most aggressive AD carries that he's played with. And what that aggression has allowed them to do has just been some incredible things here so far in NACL. And that's part of why Cloud9 ended up finishing first place in this regular split. And in this first game of the playoffs, 100% kill participation from this bot lane, lost Zazel. Showing their power, making sure that nobody can contend against them. With level 6 already for Lost, it was double sums that had been blown early on out of the hey. C9 bot lane. Completely gone to waste for CLG Faith. They can't really do anything to Lost anymore. No, at least you can see Aaron is still keeping up pretty much in CS. Uh, he's not falling too far behind. It's just the kill gold that he's feeling. As CLG yes. Faith, they know they can't go for the Herald. They're going to go for the Dragon. At least get something in exchange for it. Cloud9 still have that big play that they can make. Especially now that Tomio is level 6. You have an easy dive setup, especially with that constant pressure Diplex has had in the mid lane. Get that push and then start walking towards this bottom side. I mean, Zazel's already walking back. Tomio's on this bottom side. It just feels like an easy play. They're looking at CLG Faith, what they can do at the moment. It feels like they have to ride the struggle bus for a little bit. As long as they don't bleed out any more leads over to C9C, they do have those first item spikes that they can utilize. Like, you look at Rumble and how strong he'll be once he gets that first item for himself. Even looking at Eren and working towards that Immortal Shield Bow, a little bit extra safety from the potential burst that can come in from not only Diplex, but Lost as well. Yeah, you got a lot of bursts in CC to be worrying about, so that's going to end up coming, or rather paying off for Eren. And you see that recall coming through here. Tomio's just going to go ahead and drop the Herald. Yeah, and yes, care. Aaron and Sketch end up avoiding the dive with that timer. But uh, the problem is, you called it. This whole turret almost has gone down. NXI is in the area. He does have level 6, but they don't want to oh, push it. Mid lane too. Town. Jeez. Full combo from Annie. Not even having that first mythic completed. Diplex sooner or later just going to completely destroy town as top lane have a little bit of a skirmish between the two but you got to be careful as orn against the renekton the croc could bite pretty hard even though the ram might be able to see him underneath the turret you can tell that fake god is playing this one very patiently yeah right I mean, you you want the wave in that's the biggest thing there now he's fake god can either keep the pressure on go for the recall but big thing mid for me here is the Diplex, despite only getting one kill and that being bottom side, he's been a big part of why Cloud9 are just controlling the map right now. Yep. He's just been laying into town in the mid matchup, constantly all in and constantly forcing town to recall. And it's just opened up so many of the opportunities that Cloud9 have gone. Of course, outside the 2v2 prowess of Lost and Zazel. And town just hasn't been able to get the buffer on those rock jumps to get away from Diplex. Diplex also being smart about which stun he looks for, not usually using the Q, which is very telegraphed, going for instead, I believe, the W, which is a lot more instantaneous and 
far harder to buffer the jump. I'm not even... I, I would be amazed if uh, someone had that kind of reaction time, to be honest, because I agree. Mm -hmm. It's very, very instant, very hard to deal with here. And things are slowing back down. A Cloud9 on pace, being exactly where they want to be. Have the gold exactly where it needs to be. It's not over by any stretch for CLG Faith. This is getting harder now because now we're starting to see Mythics come through. Lost has that Gale Force. You see the Black Cleaver rush or Fake Doubled God Antonio. Doubled up is kind of weird, but hold on. Okay, Aaron's dead. There's no, there's no wow. if, ands, or buts about that one. Yeah, I, that's brutal. As soon as you get, as soon as you see the ult come through, you need to flash that. Zazel ends up going uh, down. Or I'll, rather, I'll make an Aaron. argument that you flash it, Zazel still flashes and you die. Uh, good point. So maybe, maybe Aaron <laughs> does see that. Uh, either way, goes down. That's first turret gold. All going to lost. Like, it's yeah. unreal. Like, we got to see the gold difference now. Oh, and that right there. Town trying wow. to buffer the alt. But it was well played out of both Niplex and Tomio mid lane. Yeah, you, you can't buffer the ult with Tristana jump. That's the thing. So layering on the CC like that, really nicely done from Tomio and Diplex. And they're just winning all across the map here. Like, yeah, no turret plates are going down in this mid lane, but Fake Gods even roamed to make sure nothing else happens because he just has so much time. And I actually love what Cloud9 are doing. He's just walking his way bot side. Yeah. Lost Zazel, we're still a minute on these turret plates. And with this push that they are getting here, it means that they might be able to secure more play gold. Just keep the snowball rolling. Clean gameplay we're seeing out of Cloud9 at the moment. This is what you'd expect from the number one seed, right? That their lanes understand the matchups emphatically, where they can look for those power points, where they can apply pressure to a team like CLG Faith. At the moment, they have only lost the single dragon that was traded for the Rift Herald initially. As Sketch is looking for this play onto the bot lane. 2v4 at the moment with the damage onto Sketch with the battle dance away from Zazel. That's going to be the equalizer utilized. But the blade Woo! caller okay. rips apart CLG Faith. 2v4. You can't step up the lost in Zazel. Oh, Town's trying something, but it isn't going to pan out. You force Renekton off the turret, but so much has been taken away. Not only one plate, but actually two. Four Lost and Zazel here. Oh, God, they actually might even get yeah, another I was about one. To say they That's might just get... some insane amount of plate gold coming through here. Jeez. They're just going to stay and get the turret as well. Sure, they miss a plate, but this is ridiculous. I, I don't want to, but I need to ask Magical. We need to What's see up? the gold again. I just, we uh, need to see the gold We again. need to see uh, the difference here. Lost must have so much in his pocket right eight. now. He almost bought the Navori quick plays. Like, that's crazy. Before that fight, before that 2v4 fight, it was a 3,000 gold deficit. Yeah. Look it's at it 8K. now. I know. It's ridiculous. Oh. And there it is. Luden's built means Diplex has... He was almost one-shotting him beforehand. Pressure. We said once he got the Mythic, it was, just, yeah. <laughs> it was a done deal. It's Andy, guys. Very cool interactive Annie, are you champion. Okay? Are I you promise. okay? Are you okay, but, Annie? I mean, town, are you okay? Is the real question. He's been struck by a smooth criminal. <laughs> that might be too many references. We should stop. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's stop. Let's get back into this game because yeah, this is honestly the expected outcome when you have the number one seed against the number sixteen seed. You're expecting this level of power exerted and. Nearly all, I'm sure, the, the lanes have been doing well. Fake God piloting, piloting the matchup into Orn well. Tomio has been doing a good job of farming up against NXI, getting a lot of these neutrals. Mid lane, Deflex, you know, we saw the one shot on the town and how he's almost one shotting him before. But Lost and Zazel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lost and Zazel. This, this game, been even if everyone else is doing well, this is their game. So that's kind of leading into what I want to talk about too, because they will give CLGF credit. They've been trying this whole game to make yeah. things happen. The big thing though is you have to make plays away from this bot lane now. That's a big shutdown. That's a lot of gold you want for yourselves, but Zaya is just too strong. Like, he's going to have two items off the recall. Oh, wait. Okay. They're trying again to get a oh, lot no. of stuff to stick on the Zazel, but they just, they don't do any damage. Yeah, you gotta make plays to Fake God on the other side of the map here. Like, Fake God, Diplex, where in the side lane, like, you can't do anything to loss until you pull some gold from other parts in the map, bar barring a, a monumental throw.
because this is a Zaya we're talking about. Already two items here at 16 minutes. Has gross. cleanse flash the feather storm. Like you're not gonna be able to touch her. That's just gross. With it double gross. black cleaver too. Oh yeah, I mean. That's just how you know Fake God is going to be on his own in the side lane this entire game. I, I think that's why. This, I think that's yeah, why it was built. That, exactly. Yeah, the 2v4 feels bad, man. It does I, indeed feel gotta bad, agree, man. Gotta agree, Echo. Gotta agree. Oh, man. And now... I'm just taking a sip of my tea right now. No, you, you no problem. I got you, Magical. If you want to join the conversation, use the hashtag NACL on Twitter, and we might feature your tweets on stream. And uh, they have to be good ones, by the way. So, uh, Magical, if you tweet, I'm sorry. We don't bring your tweets on this, this stream because your tweets usually suck. Yeah, I, I've been, I've been uh, banned. Restricted. Restricted. Sorry, I, I kept tweeting about Kangas being bold. You know, bye, like bye bye. it was it was funny for a bit, but you just we, we just ran it into the dirt. It's just not that fair. Yeah. All right, it happens. Uh, right now, big enough running it. Shelly, put top lane. Gonna run into this oh, turret. You scared take, me for a second. <laughs> uh, take another turret. More gold, and this time gifted over to Diplex as nice. Spread the take. love. Yeah, exactly. Might as well. I mean, we haven't gotten to check out where the gold is allocated. We can uh, imagine though. We can imagine the kind of lead loss has at the moment. Right there, Chain of Corruption not connecting. Call of the Forge God. Gonna knock up only one. It's gonna be Tomio that they focus all their attention on. But look at Zazel. The backline, the charm, the damage. The equalizers laid out right underneath the turret, but they don't even worry. Zazel was able to get his way out of there. Well, the rest of the team can start poking at them from away from the turret, waiting for the minion to regroup mid lane for that structure. Wow, so I will say, CLG throwing so much and not getting anything is brutal, but the the fact that they don't lose anyone is something. You're gonna lose two uh, turrets, the one we just saw, and oh, town. Yeah, town? Let's see, yeah. waiting for it. Okay, uh, good, good, you, you know. You say like, yeah, they didn't lose anyone, it's great, but they were all forced away from the objective oh, yeah. that Z9 wanted, which was just the tier two mid. Yeah, I actually thought they were gonna go for the bot as well, and want to play their luck. Spend the gold they have, continue this advantage. Oh my god, that's 4,300 4, gold. Yeah. And mid is pretty crazy too, and this is what I mean. Like, there are no major objectives to play for at the moment. You see Fake God, you see Diplex alone in the side lane. Get him. You have to jump them. It's the it's the only way. You cannot do anything to this Zaya anymore. No. <laughs> no. That, that unless somehow you can catch Floss out without Zazel nearby. But you can see how Zazel is trying to hover nearby Floss at pretty much every moment, except for now as I speak, going on a little bit of an adventure to clear out some wars. Yeah, the vision game, so important, is gonna make it even easier. People like Fake God or Diplex to push up in the side lane. That vision means that Diplex isn't gonna be jumped on as easily. They aren't gonna be able to surprise him on the side of CLG Faith. And it's just been pretty clean so far from Cloud9 Challengers. Very clean gameplay. Expected from our number one seed in the LCS yeah. Challengers League. This is what you want to see of why they dominated the regular season, be it with MS or with the Diplex. Since they, they brought Diplex, they've looked just as dominant as they did with MS. Right, and I mean, they make no mistake. Cloud9 were, I believe, 7 and 2 in the LCS when they made the yes. switch. Diplex was playing just fine, and it shows in how he's been able to kind of pick up where MS left off here in Challengers League. Has been doing I mean, a bang up job, whether it's with the standard stuff or, uh, you know, the magical stuff with the Kled. <laughs> I do like Kled. I, I, do, I do like those uh, fun wild picks. And speaking of yep. fun and wild right now, 20 minutes I mean, into the game. This is their birthright. It, it, they own this. Everything <laughs> yeah. the light touches belongs to Cloud9 yeah. Challengers. What's yep. that dark area over there? That's the enemy base. Eventually we'll conquer that too. I'm not even, Picking I, up the Baron is the first step to doing yep. just that. They're not even going to recall. They can fight right now. Well, NXI died too, and I didn't even feel like... like it sucks. There's just not much you could do there. You see Diplex hovering around, and all he has to do is full combo anybody outside of Orn, and they're going to die. Yeah. And now with that Baron buff again, they haven't recalled. They're just going in. They're going in. They saw Aaron, and they're like, you're an easy target for us to initially eliminate. As everyone else on at CLG Faith trying to defend the base the best they can, but they gotta be careful. Town using the rock jump just to get away as the first inhibitor will fall in mid lane, the second one in bot lane soon to crumble. 
Cloud9 can just push for the end here. They're 15k up. Ridiculously powerful. Lost has that Feather Storm back up. This is going to be the last stand for CLG. They got wait minions coming through in this base. Ooh, and look at that. Diplex. I think you he heard us talking about Lost and saying how much gold Lost had. He's like, anything he can do, I can do just as good. So now he's about the same yeah. lead over Talon that Lost has over Aaron. Mid lane, bot lane. This is this game has been run by Cloud9's carries. It has been. I'm really surprised Cloud9 didn't go for the end there. I mean, Aaron was up in 10 seconds, but even without the gold you spent, like this, they're just so powerful. They they could they could win four v five fights. They could win three v five fights at this point. As long as uh, Lost and Diplex are are one or one of those three. The point is they're such a powerful position and I, sure you want to make sure it's as clean as possible but you know number one seed want to see that decisiveness especially in these extremely dominating game states i have a feeling they just want to see how much damage diplex can do really fast because they've got everything and look at how much they're pouring to try to find the fight on the other side but they just get eliminated on the back line because of diplex he found the flag and that allows everyone to clean up clg faith a sketch flashing over the wall away from both Tomo and Zazel. But Tomio is on the hunt. They're looking for the chase. They just need to make sure there's not going to be any backs for the remaining members of CLG Faith. So the team can claim another inhibitor and possibly the game as this 2v2 fight continues. Sketch will fall once he gets out of his stasis. Taking a while, but we knew what the result was for some time. It was Cloud9 Challengers, the number one seeded team, taking the first game in the first best of three of playoffs. God damn, Alex. That was uh, some some pretty good League of Legends from Cloud9 Challengers. That was. And it was a good plan. It's the LG Fate, they just couldn't make it work. It was nearly a perfect game. Had it not been for that one dragon, that was a perfect game out of Cloud9 Challengers. They take the first game. It is the best of three. CLG Faith, they have a chance to bounce back in the series. But for now, we're going to toss to a break. And when we come back, we'll bring back grapes for our halftime or third time show, whatever you want to call it. We'll see you there.